During the summer of 1997, the first phase of the International Crown Fire Modeling Experiment was successfully carried out in Canada's Northwest Territories. These experiments were conducted to collect data and develop the knowledge that is essential for predicting the physical behavior and impacts of high-intensity crown fires. The knowledge gained from these studies will aid in the understanding of crown fire dynamics, improve the personal protective equipment of wildland firefighters, and address some firefighting safety concerns. These experiments also offer an opportunity to gain a better understanding of structure ignition from wildfires. Local Aboriginal leaders fully support this research in order to learn how to effectively protect their communities from forest fires. This series of experiments with various objectives provided a unique opportunity to bring together an international team of wildland fire scientists to study fire behavior in an integrated field experiment. These experiments will result in a greater understanding of crown fire dynamics that will translate into improved fire management. The primary objective of the project was to obtain experimental data for the evaluation of theoretical fire spread models. Crown fire data of this quality and quantity had never been gathered before. This was partially due to the difficulties associated with quantifying the thermal environment of a full-scale crown fire. The site was prepared by cutting 50 meter wide fuel breaks for fire control and access. Pre-burn sampling of the ground, surface, and crown fuel characteristics was completed in 1995 and 1996. In 1997, after a few small test fires, the first full-scale crown fires were ignited. This experiment was carried out in several major fuel types involving both gentle surface fires and high-intensity crown fires. Ground, tower, and aerial instruments were deployed in the plots to measure the energy released by the fire and to document numerous fire characteristics. Recorded measurements included radiant energy produced below, within, and above the crown fire, as well as air temperatures in front of and inside the flaming zone. Measurements were also taken of smoke chemistry, flame geometry, radiant flux, gas temperatures, and fire spread rates using visible and infrared cameras, radiometers, and an array of thermocouples. Weather data collected included wind speed, atmospheric profiles, and temperature profiles. High-speed 16 millimeter film and thermal infrared cameras were used to record the size and shape of the flaming zone as well as the rate of spread of the crown fires. Information on flame length, width, and angle was determined from this through the use of flame analysis software. The measurements obtained in the 1997 tests indicate that radiant fluxes and temperatures were highest within 20 feet of the ground and that they were significantly higher than what has ever been measured before in wildfires. No similar measurements have ever been successfully collected in full-scale crown fires. These results imply that previous assumptions about the thermal environment within crown fires need to be scaled upward. This has applications to fire behavior modeling, firefighter safety issues, and protective equipment design. The threat to structures from wildland fires is an important concern for communities, fire response organizations, and the various resource agencies. These experiments provided the opportunity to study full-scale crown fires in relation to structure ignition under controlled and highly monitored conditions. The threat to structures from wildland fires is an important concern for communities, fire response organizations, and the various resource agencies. These experiments provided the opportunity to study full-scale crown fires in relation to structure ignition under controlled and highly monitored conditions. Wall structures were constructed and instrumented to measure the total incident heat flux from the crown fires. These measurements provided information on the magnitude and duration of incident heat fluxes 10 to 15 meters from the fire. This data showed the shielding effect of tree crowns as the fire approached and the thermal exposure required to ignite a wood wall. This research provided information for the development of the structure ignition assessment model. The experimental fires provided an opportunity to test and compare standard and experimental fire shelters and to test the thermal performance of firefighters' personal protective equipment. The size of safety and survival zones were also evaluated. Current PPE is designed to protect firefighters in moderate radiant heat environments. This equipment allows the firefighter time to escape or to deploy fire shelters. The analysis of the data will be used to improve PPE and to help to determine the size of safety and survival zones. 
These tests will help to set international standards for fire shelter performance. In most of the tests, the external temperatures were in excess of 1,000 degrees Celsius, well beyond the design limits of the standard Forest Service fire shelter. Experimental stainless steel and Storm King Mountain Technologies fire shelters withstood the high temperatures, but the inside temperatures were non-survivable at 800 degrees Celsius. In one test, a stainless steel shelter with an aluminum shelter inside had external temperatures of 1,100 degrees Celsius and survivable internal temperatures of 200 degrees Celsius. A Storm King Mountain shelter deployed nearby had similar survivable temperatures. PPE was placed both on the ground and in an upright position as well as inside the fire shelters. The fires exceeded the design limits of PPE and it was rapidly destroyed. Firefighters need to understand the limits of PPE and learn how to avoid fire entrapment situations. The experimental crown fires conducted in 1997 were the most complex and intensively monitored experimental fires carried out in the Northern Hemisphere to date. It is anticipated that these and future experiments will provide fire scientists with the data necessary to make significant progress toward the development of the next generation of fire behavior models, to improve fire safety and personal protective equipment, to protect structures from ignition, and to address community concerns within Crown Fire zones. In 1998, further Crown Fire tests will be conducted. The primary purpose of these tests is to add to the Crown Fire database. In addition, the tests will determine fire safety zone sizes, test shelter performance in small openings, and monitor air quality in and around fire shelters. More testing will also be done with structures, and safety zone sizes for structures will be determined. Technical reports and overview papers written by the participants will be published after the experiments are completed in 1998. These publications are expected to be completed in 1999 and 2000.